tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. What's going on, After Buzz TV? Welcome back to How to Be a Host. I'm your host, Olivia Gabri, a.k.a. The Real OG, and tonight I have the honor to have the COO slash producer host at After Buzz TV, the one and only Phil Speedtech. At <laughs> first, I was like, wait. Great introduction. Thank I know. You. See, I learned here. from the best. I was thinking, like, what are the uh, interview fundamentals that Phil has taught me? Because I have to make sure I'm on point with them when I'm interviewing him. That's right. And luckily, I've had the pleasure of learning from Maria Menounos, Emmy-winning host. So it all trickles down here at AfterBuzz. Exactly. Buzz. And so here at AfterBuzz, you teach uh, a lot of classes to new hosts and veteran hosts. And I want to ask you, what are like some of the fundamental foundational keys that you make sure to instill in all your hosts here? The number one thing is the willingness to learn. Mm -hmm. If I have a willingness to learn, I can obviously take anyone um, thanks to everything that I've learned along the way and, and help sculpt them, right? Okay. Um, and in fact, that, that go, that's not just true for me, but anyone here and that's outside of life is outside of this place. Mm -hmm. um, if there's an unwillingness, then there's just a, a wall and you know it's in, almost becomes impenetrable or you try to figure out well how do I penetrate so I can get and make those adjustments right exactly so obviously when we come to the classes we expect to have an open mind and constructive criticism and learn you know the fundamentals of it all but what are what would you say are some like key concrete things as a host that we all have to make sure we're practicing daily I think you just said it right there practice daily right uh, to me I've redefined what talent is mm -hmm. I always viewed it as a skill set to me now it's a process I, I have a lot of I know a lot of people that are that are very skillful in the art of hosting mm -hmm. but that skill will also deteriorate over time if they're not using that muscle okay um, and so you know one of the great things about this place is that we you, any host can essentially get to do this every single day if right. they so choose to and that's really the point of it all is to keep that muscle going okay so what are some things that every host can do to make sure that they're always they always have their muscle working well the, a just be here in general or mm -hmm. host anything you know I think practicing in front of the mirror is also a big component part of that is also listening back to whatever it is that you're working on so that way you get that feedback it's one of the most cringeworthy things that most people don't do 100 <laughs> percent. but you, you kind of have to exactly there's you know the tiny little mistakes that you hear often like the filler words or repetitive words and things like that mm -hmm. none of which you will know unless you start to become critical of your own self now that doesn't mean be overly critical we all have to learn and grow at a certain pace but nonetheless uh, that's Part of the process and, and, and working at it slowly and incrementally right do you feel like there are any consistent qualities that you see that the six i mean there are so many successful hosts that come out of here and they're working in the industry we see them on tv are there any like common threads between them that you feel has gotten them to this level it's a combination of things and you know it kind of goes you can look at it in different shifts for for different people but um work ethic, mm -hmm. skill set, willingness to learn, willingness to just do it, um, positive attitude, yeah. um, and you know to, to a certain degree there, there's a little bit of luck maybe slash timing you yeah. know it depends on how you want to define it but I think part of it is a lot of people you know they sometimes want things now and you know it's just not the right time for that mm -hmm. and but I do believe that it can come in a certain point as long as you just stay the course yeah what made you want to even develop something like after buzz I feel like uh, you know a school and really a hub for just television hosts or any type of host in general is kind of rare and very specific like what inspired it well number one I can't take the credit for it well right? you are you were a part of it I was at stage I was I was at the inception of it mm -hmm. um, but it's very much so Kevin Undergaro's idea and jam and, and thanks to Maria um, his business partner and also obviously now his wife yeah the two of them really went for this and said like let's let's make this a haven and, and that's where Maria's element she would look at hosts on the red carpet and they would ask her how do I become a host she said get a reel well, yeah. how do you get a reel if 
you don't have a job. So that's, in essence, the spirit she wanted to embody with this and challenged us with. Um, so in essence, the first couple of years that, that I've been really a part of it, I've essentially followed the, the vision of what they were going for and really just executed it. And through that, I learned what I needed to learn as far as, you know, hosting. It, it kind of almost became like a secondary thing by, by just doing it and right. taking it in. Um, the second part of your question, um, well, second thing that I wanted to address with this, you know, interesting, it's, it's, it's interesting as After Buzz because it's not really technically a school because I, I don't like to view it that way because it diminishes our hosts in a yeah. sense. They are truly professional hosts. But nonetheless, they are we learn learning. along the way. Yeah, so I always like to make that distinction when, okay. that we're not a you know well exactly all out school. But we do, like we I mean you have amazing classes here, and we do get the opportunity to come in and practice whenever we want. So I mean I'm so grateful for that. And obviously the classes are kind of new, and there are a lot of other new elements we have since I've been here, and I'm sure it's very much different from when it started. So with that being said, there have been many successes and I'm sure many things that haven't been as successful but do you what's something that you have to consistently practice and remind yourself of in order to keep growing uh, in the years that I've been here I, I've learned patience mm -hmm. uh, especially at the age that I started you know I was a young kid and I, I had no patience and so I get you know frustrations from young hosts who want to make it happen right away mm -hmm. but you got to kind of just go through the motions. Um, and when I say go through the motions, I don't mean just kind of phone it in, really practice at it and, and you know, do everything that you can. And eventually things hit. And so, um, you know, little by little, that's kind of how we attacked after bus. You know, we had this grand vision and we still do, you know, like our vision from years ago is not the same because we've gotten to this place. So right. it's much bigger now, um, but it'll take time to get there. And, but you just kind of, along the way too you have to remind yourself of the successes um, and you know it's a quote that will live on forever you, you kind of learn from your failures and in that sense you know <laughs> luckily or unlucky we, we failed plenty <laughs> along the way yeah but you grow from it and you I mean you start off behind the scenes and then like you said just being around it you eventually got to be a host and become comfortable that way but do you think it's important for the opposite to happen like should hosts have behind the scenes skills as well? A hundred percent. I wish I could paraphrase even uh, something that was said to me a little while ago, but in this day and age, like you, you, you look at, let's say friends, mm -hmm. right? When, when people were working on that TV show, Friends, whether you're the, the writer or the producer or so forth, all you had to do was put your creative energies into making a great show. Then you hand it off to NBC, they aired it and all that. Mm -hmm. Now what's interesting, whether you're a host, producer and so forth, you kind of have to know the entire channel. Mm -hmm. You have to now, okay, so now you've produced this amazing show. Well, how do I put it up online, right? right. And I also got to learn SEO and this. So you got to know the entire uh, distribution model, marketing, and so mm -hmm. forth. So it's really kind of changed in that way. And you can look at it as a bad thing, or you can look at it as this is how it is, and I can be successful at it because I can kind of now control my own destiny in a sense. Right. And I mean, you learn all this stuff, but how do you even learn it? Like, are books mostly where you get your information from? Is it easy to figure out online? Do you take specific classes? Like, it's very technical. To an extent, yeah. I, I, all, all those are correct answers. You kind of just start with one thing and you try not to get overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, which granted all of us, you know, do it's at some point. It's hard not to. <laughs> yeah, we're always trying to do a lot, so I yeah. get that. But yeah, uh, books, podcasts, um, just trying it out. And, yeah. and what I always like to do is do as much as I can on my own and then see where the roadblocks are. So then I'll start researching those specific roadblocks. So it's, right. you know, if it's something that I'm completely coming into, uh, luckily we, we live this in, in this great day and age, like you can get the basics and then start it, see if it's not working. I mean, I've, I've seen with your own projects as far as editing and so forth, where, you know, you put this together, you try and experiment, and along the way you get better and better. And I've right. seen you when, when there's a roadblock, sometimes you ask me, sometimes you ask some of other people, sometimes you look it up. So it, it, there's multiple answers depending on the solution. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's kind of something I even really learned from you. And just to keep growing and, of course, things get better over time. And 
you, I mean, now you have your own podcast, and I'm sure, like, there are many things that you had to figure out, but all of the skill sets you've learned here at After Buzz probably contributed to that. And so now you have your podcast, you do Anatomy of a Movie, which is um, a different type of show on our network, Popcorn Talk. Yes. And then, of course, you do after shows, too, Shameless being, like, <laughs> one of my favorite ones. But wh how did you figure out a way to mix your passions with your hosting as well? Like, of course, you love movies and you love kind of teaching people lifestyle skill sets to make them better. Where did you find that, that cross? Um, well, I think you try to, like, it starts with step one. After Buzz already is within the realm of what I like to do. I like to teach, um, and I like TV and movies, mm -hmm. um, and all these things. And I, I like just being around good people and helping them, right? So it's, it's all there. Right. Then, um, you know, hosting was never really a passion of mine, but in that sense, it is somewhat very easy to... Like, I'm not trying, like, it's, it'd be one thing if I was hosting something that I didn't know. Right. Whereas with movies, um, in particular with Anatomy of Movie, it's something that I enjoy watching and then talking about. So mm -hmm. it's, you're kind of almost backdoor in, in a sense where the hosting is secondary. Okay. And the passion is first. Right. Um, you know, and, and like with the, with the podcast that I'm doing, you know, I'm going to do it now with, with After Buzz, the, the, the first two episodes were kind of like an experiment, and now, mm -hmm. um, you know, luckily it's getting a lot of reception, so we're gonna even now do it more, and I see the benefit where I talk about my passions for teaching now. These are lessons that, you know, can help the hosts here, but then also other people in general, and so it's kind of a cool, you'll see, we'll, we're gonna do a lot more with it. Yeah. So it's I'm that excited. driving force first of mm -hmm. passion, and then I worry about the hosting secondary. Is it ever flipped though? Is there ever an instance where you have to host and be in front of the camera and it's about something that you're not so well versed or passionate about? Luckily for me, I'm not a host. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a creative person and that's, that's what I enjoy. The... Yeah, so oftentimes like I'll, I'll get asked to do a lot of things. Like for example, I brought, you know, you brought up Shameless. We I got invited to host the Shameless 100 party for Showtime. And it was fun. It, 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 it was a very big honor, and it's because I host the Shameless show here yeah. and so forth. But I also knew I'm, as a host, I'm not the best person. You know, in that moment, J.J. Jurgens, who co-hosts the show with me, she was the better choice. Okay. And m maybe it's my humbleness. I, I also thought, like, okay, like, listen, it's a very big thing, and it obviously doesn't come along every, every time. Yeah. But I have enough opportunities in my own life where... I'd rather give it to somebody here that's more deserving, and that's mm -hmm. their passion of hosting, rather than take it from them. Yeah, but it ended up being you that did it. No, JJ did oh, it, she but did. I, you know, I got to attend and it was fun. So if yeah, you want to check awesome. out the, the the Shameless 100 celebration, um, it's on Showtime's Facebook and it's on our Facebook. It was a great event. It was a lot of fun. You should. You yeah, like Shameless. I will. I love Shameless. Shameless plug right there. <laughs> I see what you did there. Hey, it's Emmy Ross and Bill Macy. I mean, come on. It comes back soon, yeah? 9 9, September 9th oh. for season 9. Oh. So they did I, nine, I nine, wonder nine. if they did that on purpose. They so did that Probably. on purpose. Are you going to be on that panel? Yes, I will. So, right now, you're on the South Park panel, right? Mm -hmm. And you do Anatomy of a Movie, you have mm -hmm. your podcast, and what are some other things that you're working on, whether it's in front of the camera or behind? Um, Mainly, it's it's figuring out larger curriculums. Um, I'm trying to figure out more hosting exercises behind the scenes here, mm -hmm. based on the things that we're seeing as as far as the staff. That you know, it's it's, it's always interesting. You know, we, we we work on something with the host, then they get really good at it, right. then we challenge ourselves. Okay, well now how do we improve upon that? Well, mm -hmm. okay, then we start to see that, and you know, you take in phases, and so whatever phase this would be. We're working yeah. on some of that stuff. Just working on it. Um, this is a little bit backtracking, but there's one thing I really did want to ask you because now After Buzz is doing a lot of stand-up content as well as our typical panel hosting style type things. And I've done the panel exercises with you, and now I'm working on my own stuff in front of the camera. What do you think are some things that you have to be strong at as a panel host and that's different as just an independent host in front of a camera? Um, 
to me, I mean, if you're doing in front of the camera stuff, it's primarily you talking, right? It's you yeah. saying information. So how do you make that information interesting? Um, you know, whether that's through the act of writing or you just have that natural charisma to be able to... I never say I never like the term off the cuff because at the end of the day, like even let's say there's not a script, you whether you have bullet points or um, you obviously know the subject matter, yeah, right? So be prepared. Yeah, you, you you would never just riff off the cuff like that. But you know, there's that side of it. How to really present that and make make it engaging on the panel discussion side. It's it's really about preparation, but then primarily listening. Mm -hmm. You're having a conversation, you're having a dialogue, and so you want to make not only yourself look good but everyone else around you look good mm -hmm. and the more diverse opinions you can bring in and, and challenge each other um, obviously respectfully then the, the more engaging the conversation is. Were there specific things that you had to overcome when you were transitioning from your typical panel style to just rocking your own podcast? For myself? Yeah. Uh, well yeah 100% uh, you're, you're speaking directly to camera so in that sense there's not really a break, right? Yeah. You're doing it from start to finish, and uh, you got to be as enthusiastic from that start to finish as you can. And and furthermore, because in a sense, it's a lot more presentation style. Whereas you know, if we're doing a panel discussion, it, there's more of a back and forth dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, not that it lowers the standard by any means, but there's a different expectation. Yeah, hundred percent. Versus if I'm telling you something then you expect it to be very well thought out yeah so you know that's the difference do you practice your teleprompter a lot uh, I've your producer told me you kill it at the prompter <laughs> one take Phil out here uh, I don't think I'm one take but it does help for me because I write it mm -hmm. that then I, I know at least the direction and the specific words mm -hmm. but even then what's interesting is that Obviously, the way you write, and then when you actually say it, you're like, ooh, this should change, because when you say it out loud, even though grammatically and on the paper it makes sense, speaking-wise, it's not quite the same. It doesn't, right. doesn't come off in the best. Yeah. I feel like that's something I learned in journalism school, or well, broadcast journalism. It's different writing for camera than when you're just 100%. writing. But, okay, so, I mean, I've been loving your podcast. I'm excited for it to come to After Buzz and develop into something greater. And I just want to say thank you for being my mentor and creating a home here at After Buzz. You gave me and everybody else a platform here to do things like this and also just gave us a little fam to... From intern to look at you yes, now. Yes, now I'm interviewing you. Look at me now. <laughs> Full circle, baby. Okay, well, thank you, Phil. Where can everybody follow you at? At Phil Svitek, from one Emerson alum to another. Look at hey! that, another connection. And you guys know where to follow me, the real underscore O underscore G. I will catch you next week. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later.